Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith, I'm an EEG technologist, and in today's video, I'm just in my kitchen, just ate my dinner, got home from the hospital, and in today's video, I wanted to talk about what should you do if the patient starts having a seizure in the middle of you hooking up the EEG, because that's an experience that happened to me last week, so I wanted to talk about it today and talk about what I went through during that experience and what are some good tips and tricks if that ends up happening to you. So it's kind of a rare thing for a patient to actively start seizing while hooking up the EEG, but hey, it's happened to me once or twice. Back when I was a student, uh, I had a patient start seizing while I was hooking up the EEG and I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do. The electrodes were half on. I had to call my supervisor. I was a student, I was scared. At first I tried to make sure the patient was safe and yep, I made sure they weren't hitting their head or on, on anything, anything like that. And uh, my supervisor came in and they told me a good thing to do if the patient starts seizing, even if you don't have all the wires on, it's actually a smart thing to do is turn on the EEG machine, make sure the camera is on the patient so that you're recording the clinical symptoms of the patient's event, whether it be a non-epileptic seizure or an epileptic seizure. The video evidence of the event can help the doctor determine what kind of seizure the patient is having, especially a doctor who's had a lot of experience. They'd be like, they'll see the event and be like, oh, that's probably psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. Or they'll see it and be like, oh, that's an obvious generalized tonic-clonic episode. That's an epileptic event. So depending on what the doctor sees on the video, they are able to help diagnose and treat the patient better. And so another thing is, if you're a family member of a patient and they're having seizures at home, a good thing to do is if they're having seizures, even though you don't have the EEG machine, just take out your cell phone and start recording them after you make sure that they're safe, of course, record their seizure events for the doctor and then bring them into the doctor's office because that is a very valuable tool for the doctor to help treat the patient, or in this case, if it's your family member who's having these episodes. So that's why I think it, it is a smart idea to turn on the EEG machine and make sure the video's on the patient, even if you don't have all the wires on. And even if you have half the wires on, maybe that'll still give the doctor some type of EEG information. So I remember as a student, I was hooking up the patient and they just started shaking all over. I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? I need to call my supervisors because they were in the other room right across the hall. So I went and got them. I said, hey, I need really, I need help, guys. I need help. The patient's having a seizure. They're, they're having an epileptic event. And then um, later on, the supervisor ended up told me, oh, that's actually not an epileptic event. That is a psychogenic non-epileptic seizure. So it's still a seizure, but it's not epileptic. So on the EEG and psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, it's just gonna be a, pretty much a normal EEG the whole time. And there's not gonna be any like slowing after the seizure event either. It's just gonna go, the background's gonna be completely normal. It's pretty much just gonna be muscle activity and then back to normal immediately. After the, after a actual epileptic event, I might have some post-ictal or post-seizure slowing on the EEG because the brain is all tired out after seizing up for however many minutes that they were seizing for. So those are two ways to differentiate between those two. Um, but a doctor, a trained epileptologist especially, just looking at the video, they could tell and be like, oh yeah, that's a psychogenic non-epileptic event. Or they'll be like, oh, yep, that's a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. Obviously, you got the stiffening phase and the shaking as well. So pretty much what I'm trying to say is that video is a very valuable tool in helping treat seizure patients or epilepsy patients. That's pretty much all the advice I have for that situation. And number one thing is to make sure the patient is safe first before you go messing around with the EEG machine. Make sure they're safe and they're not hurting themselves. So that's pretty much my advice for if the patient starts seizing in the middle of you hooking them up to the EEG. Very rare thing, very rare, but it has happened to me twice. So I thought I'd make this video just in case it happens to you guys. So. If you're an EEG technologist, what would what do you guys suggest to do? This is just what I've learned in my experience. So if you have any insight, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, make sure you hit the like button, guys. I really appreciate it. 
I love you all. Thank you all for following me on my EEG journey and subscribe for more videos. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube and connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't already. I will see you all on the next video.